Father Andrew Campbell admonishes young priests of the church to starve of desires of the flesh in the discharge of their priestly duties as he reacts to allegations of sexual abuse reported by some members in Ghana. Coming up in Business News, Institute for Energy Security project fuel prices likely to go up by at most 35 pesos in the second window starting October 16. We have details. On the international front tonight, the United States reopens its borders to fully vaccinated travelers from 33 countries from November 8. We're live on TV3 Gun on Facebook, DSCV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. We have the news now in detail. And today, October 15, 2021, marks Global Hand Washing Day, marked as an important one in Live Boy's calendar. And over the years, Live Boy has championed the celebration of Global Hand Washing Day by using its platform to spread awareness and educate Ghanaians and, most importantly, school children on the importance of hand washing. And this year, as the movement continues, Live Boy has taken to the services basic schools at Bemaka to introduce children to H for hand washing that Life Boys campaign to spark a movement that will change the world's hand washing habits. Um, you know, don't lose the momentum <laughs> in, in its prayers like this. Exactly. Wash your hands with soap and under running water. And what a way to do it with Life mm. Boy. But away from this, the minority in Parliament says it will insist on every member voting clause by clause on the controversial anti-LGBTQ plus current that's bill currently before the House. A minority leader, Harina Idriso, hitting back at the majority leader on his attack on the Speaker of Parliament, Aban Bagman's position on this matter, is saying that the majority leader is wrong in his attack on the Speaker. Parliament and every other speaker of parliament, past or present, are citizens of Ghana first and leaders of the country and have a right to espouse their principles and values on any matter of national interest or national concern. They are expected to provide nothing more than leadership, be assured. We in the minority will insist a clause by clause vote on every word, every accompanying sentence, we will insist on a vote, including <laughs> amendment to any provision. We will do what is legally needful for within the 1992 Constitution, clause by clause. And we want every member of parliament I'm not referring just to one side. To get counted and to stand to be counted as reflecting. Meanwhile, former parish priest at the Christ the King Church, Reverend Father Andrew Campbell, has added his voice to calls for members of the LGBTQ plus community to be accepted and shown love as humans as they are. According to him, the church must not join the world to condemn them, just as other groups in society are being shunned. He spoke on New Day in an interview to celebrate 50 years in Ghana. Everybody is a child of God. When you read Philippians and you read Ephesians, especially Ephesians 2.10, you are God's work of art. Whether you're a prostitute, mm. whether you're a prisoner, whether you're a street boy, no matter what. And everywhere I've gone, I've given everybody hope. No matter who you are, I've been in condemned cells, people for the firing squad. I didn't condemn them. I didn't condemn those young ladies at the cantonments. Right. I didn't condemn them. Mm. Every Christmas they give gifts to the poor people. Every Christmas they go to the Osu Children's Home and other places and they give gifts. This is from the prostitutes. And then we go to church. Who am I to condemn them? So the same too with our dear brothers and sisters who have been condemned. I would never condemn them. What they do is not correct. You know, make the distinction. The distinction this is what Christ did. Love the sinner, mm. but hate the sin. Okay. So love the sinner, and that's, that's what I do. Mm. You know, I have time for everybody, no matter who you are. 
no matter what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I have time for you. I'll pray with you. I'll encourage you. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. And if you're a child of God, you know, God loves you. You're right. And he loves all of them. Well, let's stay with Reverend Father Campbell just a little further, shall we? He's that outgoing parish priest of Christ the King Church. He's admonishing young priests of the Catholic Church to starve of desires of the flesh in the discharge of their priestly duties. His comments come on the back of reports of some priests of the church having been engaged in acts of sexual assault and abuse of some female congregants in the Catholic Church. It's a story we've been running here on TV3 since a parishioner at the Star of the Sea Church wrote to the Accra Archdiocese to address issues of sexual abuse in the church. Reverend Father Campbell told Jonah Hughes on New Day. I'm a man of God bringing Christ to others. Mm. If I don't have God in me, I cannot give you God. We must have God within us. And where, how do we get in touch with God? It's through our prayer. I spend one hour every morning in prayer before I do anything. So my, my advice would be the same advice as Mother Teresa gave to that young priest. A young priest came to Mother Teresa and said, Mother Teresa, I'm just ordained a priest. What advice do you give me? And he was thinking, she'd say, go and visit the lepers, go and visit the poor. She said, no. What she said was, my dear young priest, go and spend one hour in the chapel every day and pray to God. Do that and you'll be a good priest. So my advice to my young priests and seminarians are spiritual life. Remember who you are. You're a priest of God. You're not a social worker. You're there to bring Christ to others. But if you don't have Christ, you cannot give. You'll be empty. I don't want to be a scandal to anybody. The devil is out to tempt us. And I, I, I think, you know, that the, the Satan was the special devil after each and every priest mm. to pull us down, to discourage us. But you see, Christ is stronger than the devil. He's stronger. So with our prayer life, you know, we fight the devil. We fight the devil and say, get behind me. Let's now do some politics and Director of Communications of the ruling NPP, Yao Bwabia Samwa, has taken a swipe at former President and 2020 flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama. Yao Bwabia Samwa, while addressing the media, accused John Mahama and the NDC of misleading Ghanaians. Former President John Dramani Mahama in his thank you tour of the various regions has reiterated his misgivings at the Supreme Court's ruling in the 2020 election petition as well as his distrust in the Jin Mensa led electoral commission. John Dramani Mahama, amongst others, has accused the NPP led government of abandoning projects initiated by the SWOL NDC administration. Responding to the allegations, Director of Communications of the NPP, Yabwa Binya Samoa says the former president comments are misleading. His song about abandoned projects is utterly misleading and he keeps singing it on his thank you tour. Even though he has been answered over and over again, the typical of that is the Saglemi housing mess where 5,000 homes for 200 million turned into less than a thousand habitable homes and the NMSI hospital contracts of 175 million dollars for seven district hospitals, of which only the Dudua hospital was ever delivered. The less said about your mama and corruption, the better. Your mama cannot be trusted to fight corruption. He accused the NDC and former president John Dramani Mahama of losing touch with reality over the latter's silence on issues bothering on national development. What is the position of president, Ma former president and third time likely candidate Mahama on the tone of political debate and its impact on economic transformation. Very little. He seems to live in a political world of his own, always lagging behind the real issues of the day. Rather, he has been harping on and on about three or four quite dissonant themes on his thank you pre-primary campaign tour. In spite of evidence to the contrary, he complains about not winning the 2020 presidential election. He complains about abandoned infrastructure and he complains about violence and corruption. Only losing candidate Mahama and his cabal in the NDC leadership continue to deceive themselves about the outcome of the 2020 elections. Yabwa Biasamwa encouraged the rank and file of the NPP to eschew political anger in their quest to break the eight. Well, the former president, John Mahama, is also been talking. He says that it will be foolish 
on his part as president and one who has studied economics to build a factory and without a plan for raw materials to feed knowing that that was a key factor in setting up a factory for sugar production in this country. Former President John Mahama said he is always shocked to hear the MPP communicators say he put up the Comenda factory and did not go about getting sugarcane plantation to serve as a raw material base. Phase one of the project, any factory, no? any CA, and a phase two, Government of India may another $24 million for sugar. My administration completed phase one of the project if you and the factory. Government with phase two, government, government of government India gave us $24 million for sugar cultivation and outgrowers. After our exit, the NPP government stated the sugar factory is not their priority. So they did not apply for the money for sugar cane raw materials. The NDC's vision was to get a factory first and the processing the plant was, later. The was it was on our program first. with the Indian government for a loan of about $24 million for sugar production. The Indian government, it was on our program with the uh, uh, 2016 Ghana uh, India. Priority projects are near World Ministry of Finance. Now, sugar uh, 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 loan for sugar production, uh, uh, almost $24 million. Well, so, a counterterrorism department of the Ghana Police Service has carried out a swoop to arrest about 400 youth in the new job in South Municipality and its environs in the Eastern Region. The exercise, we understand, was conducted to rid the municipality of Ponzi schemes operating under the name Kionet. That is fast spreading in the Eastern Region. Information from the police say the modus operandi of the Ponzi scheme leaders is to recruit young men and women from within the country and neighboring countries such as Togo, Nigeria and Ivory Coast. The victims are usually camped in rented houses and lured into paying monies ranging from 4,000 CDs and above with the promise that they will be paid double within a short period. So... The videos you're seeing uh, are these uh, uniformed recruits into this Ponzi scheme and uh, rounded up by the police. Let's go on to the telephone now. DSP Ebenezer Tete speaks for the Eastern Regional Police Command. DSP, good evening to you. Thank you for your time this evening. Th these people we are seeing, these are uniformed young people. I mean, tell us a bit more about how this Ponzi scheme o operates in the region. Thank you very much. Uh, in the Eastern region, this particular uh, crime is very, very uh, rampant in the region now. So because of that, the regional uh, police command decided to organize an intelligence-led operation that has uh, resulted in arrest of 10 of uh, the leaders of such group. What they do is that they recruit people from Nigeria, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, and some of our neighboring countries, and they promise them uh, that uh, they were going to uh, help them after they had paid uh, certain money. Usually, what our investigations are pointing to is uh, they ask them to pay about 4000 They come them into uh, places that they have rented, and they encourage them to uh, lure their nationals from their country with uh, sweet promises that uh, when they come, they, in no time, they will uh, recoup whatever money they are going to invest into the the, the Ponzi scheme, and because of uh, that fact, they have um, succeeded in defrauding so many people. As we speak now, we have about 100 plus people who are now assisting the police to uh, investigate this matter. I mean, victims. Mm -hmm. So the ten leaders and the landlords or the landladies who rent their facilities to some of these persons will both be taken on because the landladies are aware of uh, the. Uh, criminal acts of these persons, but they fail to report uh, some of I, I, these persons to the police or the police. I, I, I see. Action. So it is the police intelligence that has led to the arrest of these 10 persons that no uh, will be arrested subsequently. So these 10 persons that we have in our custody, uh, after we conclude our investigation, they will be charged with appropriate offenses that is uh, defrauding by force pretense and uh, be made to face the full cost of the law. 
I see. So uh, the, the landladies who own these properties where these recruits are kept, they are camped there for, for what? For training to, to carry out the Ponzi scheme? Is that what they, do, they were doing? Yes, they don't have their facilities to them. And these persons are using their facilities as hideouts or places where, you know, they, 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 they recruit more persons and these persons are recruited or they are lured into the country purposely to be defrauded. That is, that is the, 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 uh, the, the uh, government of, 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 uh, of the whole uh, I see. You know, argument as okay. we speak now. So these landlords and landladies are failing to, uh, you know, um, report these persons because they know these persons are in, in, in involved in criminal activities and they are All right. to report them. So okay. the, the uh, that's why I'm saying that they know. Yeah, I, so I got that point earlier. That we are going to hold them also when we, con when, when, when we finish with investigations, those landings that we have identified who are now assisting us will also be taken on by the laws of, of Ghana. Okay, so I, I just saw you have, you have arrested the leaders. So the people we are seeing are the victims of, of this Ponzi scheme. Hello, DSP? Yes, I'm saying we have arrested 10 persons. Who 10, are, 10 who are leaders. Leaders of this Ponzi scheme. Okay. All right. So thank you very much. Uh, that's DSP Ebenezer Tete. He speaks for the Eastern Regional Police Command. We're clamping down on this. Ponzi scheme operation in the region. Portia. Let's now go to the Ashanti region and the district chief executive nominee for Setre Kumewu Samuel Adeye Jekum has finally been confirmed after all 28 members who took part in the exercise voted yes. But some of the assembly members and media, including the MP for Kumewu Philip Basua, were not allowed entry into the voting auditorium. Eight assembly members were not allowed to vote because they had no accreditation to enter the voting auditorium. Over 30 police personnel from Efidriase, Kumau and Kumase were deployed at the voting center to maintain law and order. One of the assembly members denied entry into the voting auditorium. Dao Daidrisu spoke to the media. When I went there, the policeman said I should go, listen, I should stand behind him or else he will shoot me. How come? Are you practicing democracy or autocracy? How come? And we are going to sit with him at assembly. What are your Nobody can never deny us. We are going there to sit with him at assembly. I'm not confused. I don't even know what is going on now. How come? We have about 10 elected members. But look at all this. Thing. And they are not going to allow anybody to enter the room. The nominee, Samuel Adaya Jekum, who was confirmed after being rejected two times, wants all stakeholders to be united in developing the districts. I'm a symbol of unity. That has been my passion. We have a common enemy. It is illiteracy, famine, and then diseases. These are some of the things that we are fighting against. Nananum, that is the traditional authorities, the party people, all those who matter. We are together and we are prosecuting the vision of His Excellency Nanado Danko Kufuado. Well, confirmed Mayor for Second Itakrade Abdul Mumin Issa has charged Assembly members to approach the development issues in their respective assemblies as a national duty and shun unproductive positions simply because it is not their party in power. He observed that a good number of projects meant to improve on the well-being of the general masses living in that particular municipality are stalling because of unnecessary opposition. Well. But some assembly members thought otherwise and had wanted an interpretation in court. Before they could carry out their threats, a date was announced for the confirmation exercise. After voting, the nominee, Abdul Mumin Issa, had 46 yes votes against five no votes. He called for an unalloyed cooperation from all and sundry. It is my appeal to all and sundry to extend some goodwill that characterized the short period I remained in office in the discharge of my mind. Let us all have the unity of purpose, irrespective of which political divide we belong in the interest of sustainable development towards finding lasting solutions to the challenges confronting the metropolis. 
In more news tonight, Vice President of Guyana has called on the Vice President of Ghana, Dr. Baumia, to discuss areas of mutual cooperation. The two also discussed the need to sign an agreement on the oil and gas sector before the end of this year. The Vice President of Guyana is in the country for a three-day state visit. Vice President of Ghana, Dr. Mohamed Baumia, was elated about the visit of the Vice President of Guyana. Dr. Mohamed Baumia and his interaction with his partner emphasized on building mutual cooperation between the two countries. Discussions between them again centered on developing agriculture and other sectors and economies of the two countries. Another key agenda in their deliberations is the signing of a memorandum of understanding to develop the oil and gas sector. We are very, very um, happy to have you here. Uh, we want to see the cooperation deepen beyond oil and gas. We want to, to look at uh, sharing experiences uh, in areas of agriculture, in areas of industrialization, real estate, you know, digitization, which we are really moving forward with. We, the Vice President of Guyana lauded Dr. Mohamed Baumia for his warm reception. He pledged the commitment of his government in developing the oil and gas sector. In the face of continuing demand for fossil fuel, what we're effectively doing is locking in a monopoly, a $4 trillion a monopoly for the, the, the countries that have developed oil and gas sectors and really don't need to, to spend much more on exploration or development of new assets. Both partners agreed to strengthen mutual relationships in the areas of culture. The Food and Drugs Authority has also recalled some batches of the series 100% beverage on the Ghanaian market. It follows what the FDA says is information received from the International Food Safety Network and the manufacturer of the product. Panair Food Groceries Limited of high levels of mycotoxic potent, we understand, in a statement issued a while ago, the authority said most of the affected batches of the beverage have been successfully retrieved of the Ghanaian market. They end by saying they are working earnestly with the importer to remove all the affected products from the shelves while recalling persons in possession of it. I think it's like a call that yeah. um, if you have patches in here, I think it's your own good. And it was also recalled in countries like Kenya as well, mm -hmm. and it's now in Ghana. So kudos to FDA, and we should also be vigilant of the markets. You're watching News 360 Live from the News Hub. We have business news coming up shortly. Don't go away. to interview Zuzum right here in my house. Hey! Look up there. Why are you using inferior pen? It was a mistake. I no check you. Acrobat too. I'm going to knock you out. I know, sir. You deserve quality. Don't make mistakes. Stop! You did the right thing. When you are going to buy a paint, don't look left, don't look right. Go straight and grab the luxury acrylic paint. No be any paint, be paint you. The luxury acrylic paint. Paint me champion. Hello, my friends. My name is Kelkit Toothpaste. Wow. I was made to be gentle on your gum, but protected. I will protect your teeth from cavity, make your teeth whiter, stronger, keep your mouth fresh all day. And best of all, I'm strawberry flavored. So put on a smile and try me. That's amazing. Just try me. That's my job. If you say so, jump on my brush. Make your teeth stronger, chicky chicky whiter, chicky chicky stronger. I'm glad you like your new toothpaste. Don't forget to brush both day and night. Girl kids, happy smile.
Reserve the Florida Park Homes with just $5,000 today and you would be on your way to owning a prime executive investment home and earn over 8% rental income per annum located at North Legon. We have two to four bedrooms all en suite. Premium plots available, rooftop lounge, gated community, backup water and electricity, shopping center, gym and fitness center, swimming pool, asphalted inner roads and much more. A whopping 10% discount awaits you when you reserve between now and 30th October 2021. Call to reserve the Florida Park Homes at North Legon today on 0249-399932 or visit our website on www.thefloridaparkgh.com. I love football. Football can be a dirty game on or off the pitch. <laughs> Even when I'm trying to score at a party, stains find a way of tracking me down. But I don't worry at all because I have Cleesoft. Use new Cleesoft 360 Deep Clean, a unique formula with active ingredients and enzymes that gets rid of all stubborn stains and leaves your clothes smelling wonderful. Cleesoft, my favorite. Cleesoft 360. Deep clean, clean all. Let's see if you can solve this. Okay. It's a home with over 100 rooms and has space for everyone. Hmm. I don't know. What about you? Can you answer this? Stay tuned. Something big is coming. Kojak to peso, Kojak to peso. A go. Kojak says a big thank you for patronizing us, and because of that, our products have been reduced specially for you. Kojak PNF, which protects the seed from hot or cold food, it's six Ghana cities, and its mouth bag also going for seven Ghana cities. It also have sensitive toothbrush, which is going for two Ghana cities. Our regular toothpaste with a free brush in it, it's going for three Ghana cities only. Kojak charcoal toothpaste made from our very own charcoal also comes in various sizes and is sold for two Ghana cities, three Ghana cities, four Ghana cities, and five Ghana cities respectively. And a special charcoal toothbrush sold for two Ghana cities. Oh yes, and as you already know, Kojak products there it be quality care. This advert is FDA approved. The business segment is brought to you by MTN, Roma Insecticide Spray and Coil, West Hills Ridge Property, Eden Heights, Universal Merchant Bank, Lufat. Hello, good evening. Let's get into the business news now. And I'm starting with not so good news for you know, Ghanaian people. The Institute for Energy Security, IES, is projecting that fuel prices are likely to go up by about almost 35 pesos thereabout in the second window starting tomorrow, October 16. Research analyst at IES, Fritz Moses, attributed the projection to increase prices of finished products on the international market and continuous depreciation of the city. The market shows the city depreciated marginally against the U.S. dollar by 0.49%, closed the window at 6.08 cities to the U.S. dollar from the previous window's price of 6.05 cities. Oil prices jumped on Monday to the highest level in years at $81.73 for WTI and Brent at $84.33, fueled by rebounding global demand that has contributed to power and gas shortages in key economies like China and Europe. We expect that prices at the pumps could go up as high as 35 pesos addition to the current price that we are seeing. And so if you're buying it at, say, 60 to 50 pesos for well filling station across the country, you would see the price, you expect the price to not go up to not um, exceed 6.85 um, cities per liter. Um, if it was sold at around 6.52 pesos per liter, you'd expect it's not to exceed 6.82, um, 6.84 pesos per liter. So this is the explanation that we are making. Focus on dividends by oil companies and pressure on government to transition to cleaner energy, as is happening in China, 
is also driving up prices of crude and finished products. 35 pesos is basically about 9.32% um, on the current price that we are seeing. And so Well, keep your eyes on the pumps this weekend and see how it would also affect other things in the coming days. Stay with us. But Unilever Ghana, one of the largest producers and retailers of consumer goods, has donated items worth 30,000 CDs to the services primary and junior high schools at Bema Kampi and Accra. The gesture forms part of the company's drive to influence hand-washing behavior and the changing activities among children and also observe the Global Hand Washing Day. Global Hand Washing Day is a global policy observed to project awareness and understanding of hand washing with soap as an effective and affordable way to prevent diseases and save lives. It is devoted to spreading the word about hand washing, building sinks and taps, and demonstrates the simplicity and value of clean hands, particularly among children. The items donated include Live Boy soap, Live Boy liquid hand wash, and sanitizers. Head of Corporate Communication and Sustainability Lead, Unilever Ghana PLC, Henry Herbert Malm, noted the outlet is keen on improving awareness among people. It's about now letting people know about these benefits, get their awareness up and join the whole world also to celebrate it, especially to get our kids involved. He highlighted some projects Life Boy is making to support teachers and students in healthcare. We think that we want to bring more meaning to each. You know, we want to replace just what we have known, the aid, the houses and horses, with hand washing, which we think is relevant. You know, it helps us to promote this campaign of getting kids to form very good habits of washing their hands. Brand manager, Life Boy, Unilever Ghana, Derek Odechi Bosman stated the school program is a crucial part of Life Boy's hand washing behavior change activities in Ghana. The category marketing manager of Pizza's Cousins Ghana, Mary Ann Boating, has also reiterated the company's commitment to use their leading product brands to champion hand washing hygiene to fight COVID 19. She was speaking at the 2021 Global Hand Washing Day marked by the company. Global Hand Washing Day is an annual advocacy day dedicated to promoting hand washing with soap as an effective and affordable way to prevent diseases. PZ Cousins Ghana, being a brand that produces assorted soaps and sanitizers, joined some drivers at the 37 lorry station to mark this year's Global Hand Washing Day. Observing the day to spread awareness about washing of hands, sinks and tippy taps were made available to demonstrate to some traders and drivers how to properly wash their hands with soap at all times. Terex has always championed hand hygiene. This is even more relevant because of the current situation that we are in, which is a global pandemic. So what we've noticed is that after the year 2020, things have begun to go back to normal. But in order for us to do it together, so that we know that such pandemic don't happen again or affect us, even if they happen, we need to change our habits. A representative from the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Martina Abaka, Texan noted the value of preventing a range of respiratory illnesses and diarrhea through hand washing. It's important to celebrate occasions such as the Global Hand Washing Day because it provides an avenue to create awareness and to educate more people on the need to wash their hands and the need to wash their hands correctly. The 2021 Ghana's Most Beautiful finalists were part of a hand washing event to also distribute carrier sanitizers to commuters. The theme for the 2020 Global Hand Washing Day is our future is at hand. Let's move forward together. Let's move forward together indeed. Uh, Nestle Ghana has marked World Food Day with a forum on food security and food safety. Corporate Communications and Public Affairs Manager at Nestle Ghana says Nestle Ghana is raising awareness on proper nutrition while championing food safety with a strong with ION campaign. 
The theme for World Food Day 2021 is our actions are our future, better production, better nutrition, a better environment and a better life. At the forum to mark the day, Corporate Communications and Public Affairs Manager at Nestle Ghana, Deborah Kobla, says the forum is necessary in educating Ghanaians about the importance of food security and safety. In 2019, we launched the Live Strong with Iron campaign. That focuses on educating all of us on the importance of micronutrient deficiencies. We bring together stakeholders who are passionate or who can become passionate and drive the conversation. We brought the iron market, which is local foods from our farms. We brought uh, seedlings, encouraging all of us to do some backyard gardening to complement or supplement our household nutrition. Head of Food Industrial Support Department at the Food and Drugs Authority, Kofi SL, encouraged the public to pay more attention to food items they get from the market. If someone decides to add, say, Tom Brown or say wheat flour to um, granite paste and then adds oil to it, it amounts to fraud. And so let's be very careful from whom we buy these things. And when you suspect anything, let's go back and then complain. It is through complaints and then deciding not to buy from that particular person again will make some of these things change. Professor of Nutrition and Public Health, University of Ghana, Matilda Steiner Asiedu, said ensuring food security and safety is a collective responsibility. What it means is that all the things that we are doing negatively, that is impacting our environment. For example, throwing things anyhow. Look at our seeds. Now we have plastics all over. It's affecting microplastics going into the fish that we are eating. It's impacting on our bodies, you know, enhance our health. So what he's saying is that we should all consider our actions and inactions. In action, for example, you know the right thing, your friend is doing the wrong thing, you will see the unconcern. That's more business news on 3news.com. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly with the sports news. In a world where you can be anything, who will you become? When you can go anywhere and never be alone, how far will you go? When your voice can reach every ear in the world, who will you inspire? When your money can travel faster and further, who will it reach? When you can tell a story in every language, which one will you tell? When you don't need permission to turn your dreams into reality, you go for it. Whatever it is, wherever it is, go. And when you think you've reached your limit, we'll keep you going. Let's go. UMB Speed Up presents 10 steps to stay safe. If you can, stay home. Wash your hands regularly with soap and the running water. Keep alcohol-based hand sanitizer close for frequent use. If you must go out, maintain a safe distance of at least one meter from the next person. Cough or sneeze with your mouth and nose covered with tissue or bend your elbow while doing so. Avoid handshakes or hugs. Keep a mental note of people you have come into contact with or places you've been to. Avoid touching your face with unwashed hands. Drink a lot of fluids and boost your immune system with fruits and vegetables. Bank whenever, wherever with UMB Speed Up. UMB Speed Up. Digibank. Let's go. The groom is sick. What? Malaria. Malaria. Look fat. Look fat. In JJ. 
Jaru Homa Malaria and Kawon to them. Lufat, a malaria drop a cup. And now you may kiss the bride. Entrance from a cells and research center. And are you Lufat? Lufat, a two malaria sent FDA, I just saw a dead cat way at Jatum say. The Lily Nessa and this Kega Muhim Mantri Karen is Shini. Ide Anna Sungi Madasi is a Madu one of in the Siki so. Bag of Scotta Wahala Bakuma Daga Duke in the Scotch. What the NDC means to me is that after my university, I will have a job. Nah, me and only NDC at the Moshe Hami Jiake. Me came away cook. Wabana Hila Tamosh Nijara Yamlo. Been tears here, I will end this move. A Yagana Pufroa, a blue titi, a mamre. What NDC the mean give me the justice? Niaka and this in Yanama Yanaba. What the NDC means to me is that everyone in this country will have an opportunity to achieve the Ghanaian dream. The NDC is for me, for you, for Ghana. Join the NDC today so we all have a chance to achieve the Ghanaian dream. Join the NDC and help save Ghana. Call your branch executives at your polling station and register now. Ghana demands your devotion and your time. Eye zu, eye za. Shady rumor to me. I don't know, master. I don't know, master. I don't know, master. Roma is set aside spray, Ada Roma. Segment is brought to you by Cal Kids Toothpaste, Consolidated Bank Ghana, CBG. It's time for sports on News 360. I am Aniela Alote. We start off on the continent in Accra, Hearts of Oak. We'll lock horns with Moroccan giants with Casablanca in the final preliminary round of the CAF Champions League at the Accra Sports Stadium this Sunday. My colleague Daniel Yeboa visited the training camp of the Phobians here in Accra. Here at the St. Thomas Aquinas Park, Hearts of Oak has stepped up the chase to restore the phobia glory when it comes to Africa. Remember that they are playing Walk of Morocco on Sunday in their CAF Champions League to see whether they will be able to make it to the group stage. Coach Samuel Boadu and his charges are behind me, making sure that their fitness level is high, their mentality is also shaped for this big game. I mean, uh, I've seen a couple of players training here. Emmanuel Nete is back with the team. Caleb Amankwa, who played at a defensive midfield that when they play, Kamsa is also in the team as well as training with us. Enoch Kisubontin, who came all the way from Wafad. Man that we've not seen here training is Glassen Awako. He's not part of the team preparing for the big game on Sunday. This will be the 11th match between a Guinean club and Wak. Five victories have gone in favor of the Guinean side, with Wak winning three times. Wak eliminated Adriana Stars in 2011, beating the Doma Bay's outfits 2-0 in Morocco and 1-0 loss in Ghana. Fans will return to the stadium as the Confederation of African Football has granted permission for only 4,000 fans to be admitted due to COVID-19. Hards have kept a clean sheet in only one official game, the 2-0 victory over CL Kamsa in the first preliminary round last September. With the Ghanaian Premier League yet to commence, 2,000 champions league winners will need to be at their topmost ability to overcome the 2016 champions. Moroccans, on the other hand, are also riding high in their domestic league. 
they are seated pretty at the top of the table after playing five games, winning four and also drawing one. Walid Regal, whose men have shown solid, formidable defence, keeping four clean sheets and conceding only two goals in their five games played so far. We are anticipating a pulsating game, a very tough game, a very tough test. And many pundits have predicted how the folks will go through, but it's not going to be a walk in the park as they are playing against an experienced side all the way from Morocco. The winner of the two-legged tie will qualify to the group stage of the Champions League, while the loser drops to the CAF Confederations Cup. For TV3 Sports, Addison Thomas Aquinas, Daniel Yeboa. Wedad Athletic Club will be missing the services of head coach Ralid Regagui on Sunday when they face Hearts of Oak in the CAF Champions League. Regagui did not travel with his team to Ghana for the match after testing positive for COVID-19 on Thursday. The assistant coach and physical trainer had also tested positive for the virus on Wednesday. In addition, the Moroccan Giants will be missing 10 players who have been ruled out on account of injuries. On to the English Premier League, Brendan Rodgers reassures that he is not interested in leaving Leicester City after he was linked to Newcastle United. I've got a contract till 2025. Uh, I absolutely love being here. I'm uh, very fortunate. I've uh, got a great chief executive who, who runs the club, the director of football, have a close relationship with and uh, and a group of players that I really really enjoy working with and we have an infrastructure here that allows us to to look to to compete so so for me um, as long as they don't want to move me then I'm, I'm very happy being here at the club and, uh, and like I say I've seen all the reports around it but and of course it doesn't help anyone Round 8 of the English Premier League kicks off tomorrow with Watford at home to a second place Liverpool. Then Leeds and Southampton, who are currently 16th and 17th on the table, go head-to-head -head at the St Mary's Stadium. Elsewhere, Burnley, who are yet to pick up a win after seven games, are saddled with the Manchester City side, who have only lost one game thus far. Meanwhile, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Manchester United take on Leicester City at the King Power Stadium in a much-anticipated fixture. We proceed to the three sports wrap. Steve Bruce says he has tried to keep his respect and dignity following Newcastle's takeover and that there have been no discussions on his future. On Friday, New Part owner Amanda Savelli confirmed Bruce will stay in charge for Newcastle's Premier League game against Tottenham on Sunday. Liverpool's Brazilian duo Alison Becker and Fabinho will travel directly to Spain from international duty to complete their COVID-19 quarantine. The club is sending them to Madrid where Liverpool face Atletico Madrid in the Champions League on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Pep Guardiola says no player in his team is guaranteed to play after Raheem Sterling revealed he would consider his future if the game time does not increase. The England winger was previously ever present under Pep Guardiola at City, but Sterling has only started one Premier League game since the first weekend. Finally, police in Kenya have arrested the husband of a record-breaking long-distance runner, Agnes Tirop, who was stabbed to death at her home. Ibrahim Rotich has been detained and will face charges once investigations have been completed. That will be all for sports this evening. I am Manila Alute. Up next is international news. Water gives life. Water is life. 
enjoy the pure refreshing taste of awake purified drinking water which comes in a uniquely designed bottle with a lemon green tub water is your perfect way to stay hydrated and remember for every bottle you buy an amount will be donated to the national covid thoracic center ghana awake purified drinking water one for life for bulk purchase contact 0262-351-251 this advertisement has been vetted and approved by the fda all new clothes up ever fresh wait what's new it now has triple fresh formula that cleans protects and cools thanks to a powerful combination of one purifying gel two antibacterial mouthwash formula three ice cool crystals that cleans deeply fights up to 99 percent of bacteria and intensely cools to keep you protected and fresh long after brushing close up triple fresh formula cleans protects and cools You can be part of the extraordinary world of endless possibilities on Vodafone. With the best value and amazing data offers and services available in Ghana, your dreams are achievable. Get more for less with Vodafone Data. Vodafone. Together we can. Entertainment news segment is brought to you by Puma Drinks. Tonight in the segment, family of the late veteran actor Kofi Lane, a.k.a. Koshe, on Friday morning marked one week of the passing of their son. The event was attended by family and friends who eulogized the actor for his immense contribution to the growth of the local movie industry. <laughs> Enthusiasts, fans, and friends of the late Kofi Ling gathered at a Beneza Down in Dansoman to observe one week of his passing. Age 76, the renowned actor passed away on September 16, 2021, after a short illness. Actor Wache said he will remember the late Koshe for his originality and immense contributions to the growth of the local movie industry. Koshe Kofi, Kofi Lane was a prolific writer. Most of the stories, I would say all the, almost all the stories he, he performed in on uh, a Khan drama was stories that came from his, his hands. He was the one who writes everything. And when he is performing to realize this man has something in him. He is gifted with anything he does. Sam Mentees eulogized the veteran actor. I can't replace anyone like Koshe. I can't. Because Koshe is a different person altogether. Koshe is strict. At the same time, he was lovely. But the way Koshe will train you, I don't think you can misbehave in the public. The widow, Efian Ponsa, described her late husband as a good man with a great sense of humor. The final funeral rites for the legendary actor will take place on February 25, 2022 at Gomwa Epankrum in the central region. He is remembered for his role in local series, Akan Drama, and the district's colonial courts. What did you just say to them? Oh, uh, they said they asked me why you were angry. 
May his soul continue to rest in perfect peace. The Sankofa Flamingo Foundation, in partnership with the Musicians Union of Ghana, that's Musica, has launched the 2022 Well Junkano Festival with a call on Africans to celebrate their heroes and be proud of their culture. The festival aims to enhance development, promote tourism, and foster cultural exchange between Ghana and the Bahamas. <laughs> is a street parade with music, dance and costumes of mixed African origin in many islands across the English-speaking Caribbean every Boxing Day and New Year's Day. These cultural parades are predominantly showcased in the Bahamas where the music is also mainstreamed and competitions hotly contested. The festival is believed to have originated several centuries ago from Princess Town or Pokeso in the Hunter West District of the Western Region. The Sankofa Flamingo Foundation is hoping to replicate the Jankano experience in Ghana come March 2022 to promote tourism and throw a special spotlight on Ghana's rich cultural heritage. And our main focus will continue to be as I move this initiative forward to bring also humanitarian initiatives as well as the research and then building this grand heritage tourism product between all of the stakeholders in Junkanu. Now in Bahamas we have a very good tourism product. For a country of less than half a million people, we actually bring in over seven million tourists a year. Well, before COVID, I should say, right? So essentially, we're looking to model that tourism product. Vincent Boache is the executive director of the World Junkanu Festival. We just finished a year of return. We're working on Beyond the Returns. This is a permanent uh, heritage tourism product. And not only Princess Town as a center of focus, but we want to dot it, uh, the route where John Canoe took, Asin Manso. So Asin is integrated in it. Kumasi, Kwada, so Agrikins in Mamensia, Cape Coast. And all like um, slave resistance, remembering uh, slave resistance. And I think. Uh, that's how big it is. The U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Stephanie Sullivan, first experienced the festival in the Bahamas years ago and is excited. Jankanu is heading to Ghana. Uh, we hope the momentum of tourism that uh, the year of return kicked off in 2019 will, will take hold again. I think that this is a wonderful way to continue to uh, build those bridges uh, between Ghana, between Africa and um, the extended family in the diaspora. Let's now go to the United States of America and other countries for some international news. The U.S. has said it will reopen its borders to fully vaccinated travelers from 33 countries on 8th November. And the new rules announced by the White House, vaccinated people who have had a negative test in the last 72 hours before traveling will be allowed to enter. The current rules bar entry to most non-U.S. citizens who have been in the U.K., China, India, South Africa, Iran, Brazil, or a number of European countries within the last 14 days. More than 30 people were killed and dozens were injured after blasts tore through a Shia mosque during Friday prayers in the Afghan city of Kandahar. Pictures from inside the Bibi Fatima Mosque show shattered windows and bodies lying on the ground, while other worshippers try to help in what is suspected to be a suicide bombing. Police in Kenya have arrested the husband of record-breaking runner Agnes Tirop after she was stabbed to death. Ibrahim Kipkema Rotich was apprehended in the city of Mombasa after manhunt. The 25-year-old two-time world champion bronze medalist was found on Wednesday morning lying on a bed at her home in the town of Aiten with stab wounds in the neck and abdomen, local media reported. Well, today is 15th of October, as merely be aware, 2021 marks Global Hand Washing Day, marked as an important one in Live Boy's calendar. Over the years, Live Boy has championed the celebration of Global Hand Washing Day, Porsche, isn't it? By using uh, its platform to spread awareness and educate Ghanaians 
and mostly school children, most importantly, on the importance of washing this year as the movement continues. Live Boy has taken it to services basic schools at Bema Camp to introduce children to hand washing live boys flagship campaign to spark a movement that will fundamentally change the world's hand washing habits and covid is also not yet over remember to wash your hands with soap and water True. Yeah, live boy will even be better <laughs> well that's more news on 3news.com my name is alfred okansi and i am Portia. we'll have a lovely weekend